Hi, thank you for studying with me today. I will be going over saddle topics for ethical and legal issues. Normally when we're studying for the NCLEX, we pretty much focus on like the disease process, but there are some hidden gems that we can get those questions correct if we gave that area a little TLC, and that's what we'll be doing today. So let's get started. The first topic is incidents that need to be reported. One of the, thing, one of the things that need to be reported is incidental omissions of ordered therapies. That just means that there was an order written and you were supposed to do something and you didn't do it. So therefore, a report should be submitted on it. Next circumstances that lead to client injury, a client that falls, medicational error, needle stick injuries, procedures or equipment related injuries, visitors with illness, or visitors coming to the hospital to see the patient that is sick. That's a red flag. You really should focus on that and keep it in mind because that's an answer choice that normally we wouldn't pick on the boards and we should because it's supposed to be reported. The next topic that we're gonna go over is telephone orders. We know within a telephone order, the date and the time of the entry should be there. We're gonna report the order. We're gonna repeat the order to the physician and record the order. We're gonna sign the order, begin it with a TO, which is the abbreviation for telephone order. Write the physician name and then add our signature. If another nurse witnessed this order, he or she signature follows. The physician also countersigns this written order within a 24 hour grace period. We're gonna move on to components of a medication order. The components are the date, time, when the order was read, medication name, medication dose, route of administration, frequency of the administration. The physician or healthcare provider's signature must be on that order as well. And don't forget the physician ID number, red flag. That's another answer choice that we overlook and wouldn't pick on a saddle question for medication order. The physician ID number is a very important topic. We're going to move on to causes of disciplinary actions. Things that the Board of Nursing can write us up for come after us for. And some of them are unprofessional conduct, conduct that could adversely affect the health care and welfare of the public, breach of confidentiality, failure to use significant knowledge or skills or nursing judgment. physically or verbally abusing a client, assuming duties without significant preparation. And they're saying like, if you know that you're not that skilled in drawing blood, but you still go draw that patient blood and break the needle off in their arm, you can be held liable. Also, knowingly delegating nursing care to unlicensed personnel that places a client at risk for injury. Know our scope of practice, who we can delegate to and who we can't delegate to. 
failure to accurately maintain a record for each client, falsifying a client's record, leaving a nursing assignment without notifying proper personnel, don't walk off and abandon your assignments, or as simple as something as having a felony. Those are things that the Board of Nursing can come at us for. The next item we're going to go over is the Nurse Practice Act. What does the Nurse Practice Act do? They set educational requirements. They distinguish between nursing practice and medical practice. They also define the scope of practice.